<laughs> Cheese! What's up? Hello guys. What's happening people? Slightly different background. Just a little. Yeah. Very, yeah. very Game of Thrones. I know, we're both in Thrones, literally. And look at the bed. This bed is ridiculous. We are in the south of France <laughs> right now. We were in Paris and then we went to where we are now. And we're staying in Nice. There'll be a vlog coming. So, part of this video, which is about the differences between London and New York. You know, America versus UK. And I say that because, you know, when I talk to people in New York and I say, oh, you know, I'm from London. Oh, where are you from? I'm from England. Oh, whereabouts from London? And then they say, oh, usually the next question is, so what do you prefer, New York or London? That's like the number one question I get asked when I meet people. And so I thought, let me sort of spin that question and just talk about the differences because there are lots of. Right. And being Michael's American and I'm British, I thought it'd be nice just to talk about it together. So. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll kick off first and it's going to be like I'm going to ping pong in different categories different things mm. okay literally and again this is so random but these are just observations I've noticed I drive we both do I've noticed that they're in America sorry but they're they're much more aggressive well New York I find is very aggressive with driving but they're extremely aggressive here like for example this is for drivers if you're not a driver you're never going to skip over this part <laughs> but I find that like they just cut in front of you if you're in a side road waiting to turn into a main road you know the traffic go by in England you'll be waiting all day you'll be waiting all day York. in England often they will that you know you'll they will stop flash their lights and go like go on so you can come out don't hold your breath in New York you'll be sitting there you just gotta wait for a gap and just take it I don't even know about wait for a gap just take it just, yeah. <laughs> yeah make it and take it that's, exactly that's make it, it and take it that yeah. is it New York is definitely a very aggressive driving state I don't know about America in general but I can definitely say for sure New York my only draw is like New Orleans and New York and I did live in Florida for a little bit. That's a very different experience. That's not even America, I don't think. No. <laughs> so what about you? Any differences that you've noticed? I know you've been to London a well, few times. Well, obviously roundabouts. Like just the roads yeah. themselves. They're so much easier to drive everywhere else in the world. But roundabouts, that's like the best invention ever. And it's like, that's the one thing that America left out. Like, I don't understand that. You have two of them, I think, in New York. Or three. There's, there's only like... Yeah, Columbus Circle. Columbus, and, and they're all around Central Park. But outside of that, I think there's... Yeah. And I it don't would even make so much sense because there's so many... Yeah, because there's so many points in, in New York where they needed. In South of France, they're all over the place. They're everywhere. Everywhere. Just in Paris as well. London has yeah. them out everywhere. Yeah. They're just a very, Useful. very efficient way of moving traffic. Exactly. You know, and everybody's courteous. I mean, I think that plays into it too. Mm -hmm. It goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Like in New York, they just cut you off. So even if you do have a roundabout in New York, you're never going to get into the roundabout because nobody will let you in. Yeah. Just kidding. But, you know, I, I think you get the point. Is like, you just, there's a lot more courtesy. Another thing I've noticed, and I'm going to say it right now, is the number of interracial couples I've noticed is much less in, I'll, I'll keep it to New York specifically, but I've noticed sort of generally when I see any footage across America, in whatever form, you don't see as much as you do heavily in London. I'm born and raised right. there. London I see like, that. There's nothing unusual. I feel like it's, it's, a, awkward, melting, it's, it's a melting pot yeah. in the sense of relationships. It's not even just like exactly and you see you it a time. lot like we're not an anomaly in london at all you know it's almost the opposite so many relationships are black guy white woman black woman white guy you see that every day all day all day even now it's 2022 we'll walk into a restaurant and we are <laughs> the only two that look like this i, I love when i, head, that's really I love when the head turns i think it's like, unusual we all sat down the woman like clocked us when we sat down and it was weird and i was like all right fine eye contact kind of thing but yeah. throughout the whole dinner she just kept look literally like she her back was to us and she would turn over here. her shoulder here and then she would just look at it to my hair another difference that i've noticed between london and style New York. let's just state the yes! obvious yes <laughs> the styles are different wow this is a good one actually i'll let you go first what do you think about the difference thank you i actually yeah. thought it would be better than yeah. i come out with this london is like a very cool edgy vibe like it's almost I don't want to say underground because that's like so cliche, but I mean, 
It kind of is. It's just like the rough around the edges and there's nothing really chic about it in a lot of ways. I mean, I'm sure there are chic parts of London sure. and people do dress in that way. I mean, especially when it comes to like the Altaiers, when it comes to like, oh, what's the name of that word? Ooh, who swallowed the dictionary? So yeah, Savile Row. Savile Row. Well, yeah, I you mean, know, my like God, that, that's that not kind of style. For London. No, but I'm just... <laughs> But that's what I'm saying. Like, typical London style to me is grungy, edgy, kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, nothing really refined. It's just kind of like your own twist on different things. and that... Exactly. A twist on different things. But uh, you've got to remember the days of, like, punk. And that's something that is very historical in London, our culture. We grew up with the punk rock era. You know, Vivian Westwood and, you know, Doc Martens. Yes, I wear that a lot. It's very much embedded into the culture of England. Especially, like, you know, the working class. That kind of thinking I think has translated through the average street style of London like for example like I said brand wise Doc Martens I see those a lot on women and men in England and they do lots of iterations of them like they don't just wear the Doc Martin boots they will wear the Doc Martin brogues lace-ups stuff like that you do see quite a lot of stylish guys as well they put a lot of effort into the way they dress compared to America as far as style is concerned I think it might be I don't know how would you say America style is just generally, if you had to compare. Is it different? Wow, it's very different. Like, I don't think America technically has a style. I mean, I think New York might have a, an edgy style, which is always just kind of like related to black. I don't know of like a specific mm. style to New York, you would say. Like, I could attribute Sex Pistols immediately to, to England, London, right, yeah. in England. And I could even think of like the area, like I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but there's a specific area that just reminds me of that whole grunge. Carnaby Street, yes. maybe, Carnaby, or Camden the Market. The, Camden Market, Camden, 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 Camden yeah, Lock yeah, yeah. he's talking about. Yes, the Camden Lock. Yeah, that's where the yeah. bridges are. But yeah. like that whole area, like everybody has that vibe. That's almost yeah. like where it just kind of came from almost. Yeah, I also I feel like in London, we don't take ourselves too seriously or even um, England as a whole. You know, we sort of experiment a little bit more. Our style can be a little bit more eclectic and experimental, where I think in America it's slightly more formulaic. You know, another thing I realize, yeah. you see a lot in America that you don't necessarily see abroad. It's kind of like sportswear. Like the, yeah. everybody wears like a specific team shirt or a hat. Like yeah. it's a New York hat or it's an LA hat. But yet they're crisp. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Like they're dressed really, really nice. It's like a casual nice. And that is, a, I guess, to me, kind of New York mm -hmm. style. Because that's something you could say, oh, wow, he looks like he's from New York. Mm -hmm. They all kind of have that same vibe. Another thing I've noticed is humor. Very different in England versus US. There's I still don't laugh at our jokes. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> there are things that I can say in New York and it just goes over the heads here. Actually to the point where it can be offensive. Like they'll, they'll, and I'll be like, oh no, I'm not being serious. That's what I'm saying. In England, we like to, we take the piss out of each other all the time. But I feel like if you try and take the piss out of somebody here, like you're talking to a woman, she's going to like, she's going to remember that, you know? And I'm like, she's I like was joking. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm thinking I was I was actually joking. It's to the point where I'm very careful with what I say to Americans versus if I'm back in England because it's a, it's a cultural difference and it's a nuance I don't think you'd catch unless you'd truly been for a period of time in both cities. One thing I noticed, which I'll make it real quick because I know Karen doesn't like it when I talk about cars, but the cars in Europe are so much cooler than the cars in America. That's a good one. That's all I gotta say. The cars in England, much smaller. In America, France. they're very much, yeah, here. In New York, the cars are bigger. They're into like the, the SUVs and the big cars and people movers, we call them in England. So yeah, that's a massive difference. Like in America, they all drive around with like one person in a massive- seven, In a massive- Seven-seater. Seven-seater car. <laughs> so really, really, not all. I'm generalizing, sorry, yes. okay? Yeah, it's true. Not that, everyone is that I'm way. generalizing. You know, if you're driving like a Mini Cooper or anything smaller, like for God forbid, a smart car or something, which are everywhere in Europe, in America, I've actually had them say to my face, like they'll say to you, I'll never drive that, that's a death trap. They all say yeah. it's a death trap. When you get in a car crash, you'll die. I've noticed when I, if a conversation comes up about cars, Small cars they, in America, yeah. they frown upon them, they say they're a death trap. That's and, why the Mini is here, no longer a Mini. If you think about yeah, it, when they, the Mini they first came it out in New America. York, it was small. That's the, the That's the original, yeah. They just like got bigger and bigger and bigger, and bigger and bigger. And now the Mini is like twice the size of the Mini that we have now. Yeah. I put my car next to the newer minis and it's like holy crap like yeah. you can see it's like this much taller this much longer also TVs this is again this is so random but it's just things I've noticed since I've lived in America New York especially the ads on TVs come on so much more frequently in America like every five minutes
minutes there is an ad, a commercial break. Whereas in London, you know, I'll watch a program for way longer than five minutes and then you'll get an advert. The money here <laughs> in, in New York. Advertising. It's just ridiculous. Same with the magazines even. The amount of ads in the magazines in mm -hmm. America are so many, right? Go that's through. What, that's what makes the book. <laughs> just keeps flicking, flicking, flicking through before you get to the table of contents. Way less advertising in, yeah, just um, in, general. in general. You don't see it all over billboards here. You don't see it like all over every single vehicle and taxi and this, you know, it's... Yeah, it's much more prevalent. It's, it's a lot yeah. less advertising just in, in Europe in general. Yeah. Another one I just thought of is just the underground. London and New York both have subways. We call mm -hmm. them underground in London. We call them subways in New York. The same thing, it's just train yeah. system. It's much cleaner, way cleaner. I mean, you can eat your dinner off uh, it. We all, we all know the New York in London, subway is not But in New York, it's like a dungeon. <laughs> I call it the dungeons because you go down. God forbid, do not look at the ceiling when you're standing on the platform. Yeah, it is a bit And funny. if you do, keep your mouth closed. The amount of crap that's like hanging off and cobwebs, rats running along the track, water. I my my Strike. god! And in England, it's so much cleaner. It's clean yeah. tracks. The platform is clean. When you're waiting for on the platform, and we look at the wall when you're waiting for the train to come through the tunnel, just look at the posters for advertising. Stand on the platform in New York, and it's just looking at crumbling walls and stuff. It's awful. It's really, really, really bad. So, and also security-wise, you see a oh lot my. more. Um, security is nice. There's a lot difference. of homeless that you see on the trains. In New York, like you get in the carriages, you just see them in there, they're sleeping or just whatever with their things. But also like buskers, musicians going around, people with showing signs, asking you for money, like written on it saying I'm doing this. Which is this. part you know, of the subway which is experience. Part of, it's, it's part of the experience, definitely, but, but maybe it's, not it's the an observation. Part of it. <laughs> it's an obs but the, the entertainment and all the that difference. stuff, yeah. You don't hardly see that in London when you're taking the trains, mm. see all of that. And I think one of the reasons or you don't Paris. see that is because of, there's more right. security. I I notice there's a lot more staffing on the London underground. So right at the gates. Right at the gates before you actually go down. So I think they're helping as a barrier to help stop them coming in. Okay, so while oh. Michael's adjusting the camera, another difference between both is a cultural thing. I feel like in America as a whole, amongst women, generally speaking, okay, I'm generalizing, I have noticed there is much more of a culture of getting the ring. At a younger age. Yeah, like it's very really much young. like it's about, you know, you're you're dating to get married. There is no other purpose of it, which is fine. But I'm just talking about what I'm observing. In London, I notice that you see a lot more couples who aren't necessarily married. They are in a very long term, as in years, of relationships they may even have children or a child together they're not married but there's no cultural pressure not being looked down upon that they're not married it's just normal they even may have a house together or a flat together and live together they're still not married it's quite normal to have done all of those things and to not be married and then eventually they may choose to get married but generally in America, I find it's the opposite for sure. It's really about getting married. It's all a lot, about- A lot of my friends got married very It's all young. about that. It's all about just getting married. That's a lot, just a, a difference lot of them, a lot I, of them know, I have noticed. Well. <laughs> um, it's all about the ring and getting the ring and getting married and- Yeah, I'm not knocking it. Coming from New Orleans, a lot of people get married very young. But at the same time, you know, not everyone gets divorced. I, I have friends that have definitely stayed married <laughs> since they got together. And I mean, super cool. It's, it's amazing to see with beautiful families, everything. Shout out to my peeps. Anyway, there is a culture of that, like, first thing you want to do is just get married and, I don't know, it's like your form of independence, I think, when you're young. So what I do love about America is the fall. They love to celebrate the fall, especially like in New York where we live. Yeah. So once autumn, proper, proper seasons. in other words. But yeah, they love it. When the leaves turn, they do like what they call a fall drive. Yeah, that's it. So they go driving. I say they. You know, I feel like an Englishman in New York, literally, posting. So when I say they, I'm not including myself. But they love to do like a full drive. And they literally just go upstate driving. Like it's like going up to the countryside just to look at the leaves turn. Mm -hmm. So it's really cute. And also Halloween, they really celebrate that in New York, in America as a whole too. They really go out with like dressing up, Halloween parades as well in New York. They do a massive one. Yeah, they're yeah. into their, their proper holidays, like celebrating the holidays. Definitely. Whether it's Christmas, whether it's yeah. Even Easter. Everybody goes crazy for Easter. Yeah, like, they do. I like the they put all the decorations like the outside. Parade. Yeah, and they do like the Easter egg hunt and all that stuff. And they put burying I'm the about eggs. The New York Easter oh, yeah, the Easter parade. parade where in, they have all the Avenue. stylish hats and everything. Like That's, that's what I mean. Huge. Like, they really love to celebrate yeah. all of the. So it's really holidays. sweet to see that. And also, another thing that's huge and very different is graduation. In America, they do graduation ceremonies, right? When you've left college. In England, we don't 
Cool, we just like, you know, you've got your certificate and you're out the door. So like, good luck, mate, try and find a job. Listen, I'm just keeping it real. Well, that's quite funny. One of the differences, I say potato, you say... Potato. No, you don't. You don't <laughs> say potato. I say tomato, you say... Tomato. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I say tomato. Tomato. I, I say, say potato, I say tomato. Side, I say sidewalk, you say... Sidewalk. Oh no, I don't! <laughs> I've been here too long. I say pavement, you say... Sidewalk. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I know. <laughs> yeah. I just I asked my God. You, you say sidewalk. No, no. I did. I said sidewalk. I say, I say pavement. I say lift. You say? Elevator. Okay. That's a good one. Like restroom, rest bathroom. Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Typical. But then think we say I'm going to the toilet. Right. But here they say we're going to the restroom. Let's go to the toilet. What's well, better than saying bathroom? Better than saying toilet. Toilet. When I'm talking to people in, the, in America, they'll be like, oh my God, that's so cute the way you said sidewalk or lift and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it's like, <laughs> I don't know, I just think it's just strange. But the Americans in general, again, generalizing, they love the British accent, I've noticed, as yeah. a whole. I do. Yeah, they really do. They like it. I think in England, we also like the American accent, but I, think, I feel like it's more so loved, the Americans loving the British accent. Which sure. is something I've noticed. I feel like there's also a bit more opportunities in New York than there is as a whole in London. I'm going to speak to my profession, working in fashion. I've also been told this from people who live in London. They agree that there's more opportunities in New York slash America than there is in London. You can just progress a bit more. I feel like there just, there seems to be a lot more volume of opportunities here. Sorry. Yin and yang, you know? Potatoes. Potato. Potatoes. Oh, we both say that the same way. Okay. <laughs> if you've been to both cities, London and New York, what have you noticed are like really big differences between both? Let me know. True. Another thing is the weather. Um, I've noticed that the weather is very much year round, but I've got to say it. It's year round, gloomy, dark weather drizzle in England. With the odd month. It just month. is. With the, with, odd, with the month. odd flash of a really nice day or, or heat wave week, and then it's back to being that same as before. Whereas in America, especially in New York, you get proper seasons. And I love that about New York, especially because I'm into fashion, so I get to really enjoy wearing fall closet, summer closet, winter closet, boots, and you know, like layering. Up and then, she just and enjoys then summer. Getting dressed up. I know because I can like wallow in it, I can just backstroke in the seasons and just enjoy all of it. Oh, I love all that, <laughs> so cool! So, yeah, I love the fact that we have different seasons when it's hot in New York, it's really hot, yeah, and it gets dark late and it's really warm, and then when it's cold, it's really cold, it's like zero, sometimes it goes below zero. So, I like that proper seasons. That is cool, yeah. I have to admit. And coming from New Orleans, we have one season, yeah. <laughs> Hot and humid. <laughs> Food is different. The portions, obviously, I think worldwide people know about that. The portion sizes in New York are massive. You think of Cat's Deli and they're like double decker, triple, quadruple size sandwiches. Are like mm. literally no lie. They are this big. They are that thick. There's a piece of toast there and there and it's just like layers and layers of pastrami and cheese and this. And <gasps> cheese! Well, no, stay, stay with the food. No, I've already, I've already done that. Category. I'm moving That's on. Fine. Conversely, in England, we don't like do these kind of massive, massive, massive sandwiches. I still so, think we have better food. Um, moving on. So cheese as well is a massive food ingredient in New at least in New York. They love well, the one cheese on everything. It's all about cheese here. We will go to a diner and I'll, and I'll just say, oh, well, are you ready for your order? I'll give her my order. I'll say, I'll have an egg white omelette with, I don't know, onions, ham, and tomatoes. First question cheese? out of my mouth, cheese? Do they say cheese? <laughs> I don't say that, but it's in my brain. I just don't get it. What is your fascination with cheese? Also, Mexican food. They love Mexican food in this country. But if I you, like Mexican if food. If you don't like Mexican oh, food. Oh wait, I'm American. I'm gonna warn you. <laughs> I'm gonna warn you. Just expect it. It's like the fish and chip of England <laughs> is Mexican food here. Or the Indian. We love a good Indian, they right? Like a Friday night, Indian curry night. Curry. Yeah, we love all that. And obviously fish and chips, that's a given. So the Indian to London is the Mexican to New York. 
they love Mexican, and I don't. I don't like Mexican food. Yeah, and I don't really like Indian food, so you can imagine how much of a struggle we have. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's one of those things. I think a lot of it's just to do with the cultural uh. differences in population, because there's a strong Mexican population in America, and it makes sense because geographically, where America is in relation to Mexico, mm -hmm. so I think it's just that filtration has just come through and it seeps into the culture of America. And you can say the same for England with the Indian food. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, because there's a the big um, Indian Bangladesh. Yes. community in London. I mean, there's tons more, honestly. There's so many differences, but I just wanna, we could do a part two if you're interested. So thumbs up this video. And if you're liking the fact that, you know, we're doing this video together, that's the quickest way to know if you're liking this kind of video. If you're this far, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I do lots of videos. That's really about fashion, by the way. I don't do videos like this that you're seeing. Often. Often. I do have a video on how we met. A lot of you, when you watch it, you go, oh my God, I can't believe it. And we can't believe it either. It's the strangest way ever. I'll link that video for you below. Like I said, we are in France at the moment and there is going to be a vlog coming. On TikTok, I'm already posting mini vlogs of what's going on. Get Ready With Me's are up there. Michael is in some of them as well. Uh -oh. What I've bought in France is in there. Actually, something that Michael got for me and there is an H word and he got it for me from Paris. But it starts with E. Pronounced. <laughs> pronounced <laughs> is uh. on my TikTok. I'm going to go now and see you next week, Friday. I think it's going to be what everyone is wearing in New York, episode 29. Wow, episode 29, can't believe it. Anyway, follow me on Instagram if you want to see where we are, everything that's going on, and on TikTok. I'm posting more of it on TikTok than I am, and then you will eventually see a vlog video of this whole trip and yes. everything. That's it. I'm gone. Bye. See you later. See you guys. All right, we're gone. That was fun. Again. Thank you.